Seriously. I cannot understand a single word you're saying. Oh, fuck, I just remembered I can't multitask. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Sabrina and today I'm going to be doing the books and makeup book tag. I obviously wasn't tagged in it. I just want to do my makeup while talking about some books. That's what we're going to do today. I don't know who the original creator is, but if I find out, their link will be in the description box below. So we're just going to get started. I already did kind of my skincare stuff. I do not take care of my skin. As you can see, like <laughs> the acne ridden skin. I've been a little bit more diligent with taking care of my skin. So I just washed my face this morning. I applied some sunscreen, some moisturizer. I should also mention that I am not a pro at makeup. I have no idea what I'm doing half the time. So don't come for me. I have the questions pulled up on my phone. So I'm gonna be not looking at the camera the entire time. Also, my mirror is right over here. And so, yeah, I'm not gonna be looking at you. I'm sorry. Ew. I do my makeup in a different order and so I'm gonna be going out of order with all the questions. Starting first, primer. Pick a book that left a lasting impression on you. And for primer, I use the Rare Beauty one right here. Pick a book that left a lasting impression on you. Well, obviously I'm gonna go with one of my all-time favorites i have a lot of all-time favorites but if i'm gonna choose one it's gonna be on the jelly co road by melina marchetta i love that book it is one of my favorite books of all time it makes me sob so much even when i'm not like actually reading it because i'll often go back and just read certain parts and it always makes me cry and i always like find something new once like i skim through it a couple of times as you do with all things. It follows um, our main character, Taylor. She's had not the best childhood. Did that even fucking make sense? She didn't have a great childhood. And it's like two stories intertwined. I'm totally gonna fucking butcher the <laughs> synopsis of this. She lives at this boarding house and there's this territory war that's going on with the cadets, townies, and the kids at Jellico School and it's about her grieving learning about her childhood um friendship and all that two stories that are intertwined with each other that deal a lot with grief and friendship that's kind of like the whole base of what it is i love it so much what i do next is eyebrows for eyebrows it is pick a book you think everyone should read oh this is a hard one product i use for my eyebrows use the NYX pencil liner here and the color top, taupe, top, I don't know. I can't read, obviously. <laughs> A book everyone should read. I think everyone should read Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. It's such a heartwarming book. It has like a really good message within it. And I just love how it centers on friendship and how like, how influential friendship can be. It's like, yeah, a lot of stories are like that, but like this one like centers heavily on friendship and I love it. Made me cry, obviously. I don't know, I think it's just such a great book, especially for coming of age people. I really resonated with that book. It touched all the feels. I think that's, I don't know. If you don't know what this book is about, this book follows our two main characters it's been a while since i read it i think it's two main characters oh fuck i don't remember it follows because i just don't know like i forget whose perspective it's in but it follows our main character francis and she's in her last year in high school and it also follows our other character alid and he is going into his first year in college um these two bond over this podcast and they form a friendship and it's so fucking wholesome and i love it but obviously some stuff happens it's a lot of heartbreaking things that happen in the book but i really love it also by the way i will put sugar warnings for these books that i'm going to talk about in the description box below if you are interested in them this is a really really amazing book and I think everyone should read it. 
I also finished a book yesterday and I have not finished a book since March. March, guys. March. I mean, I knew that was going to happen, but I'm still very, very surprised that, like, I actually did it because I had to finish school first before I indulge in my hobbies. I hated that so much. I don't know if they're even. They are definitely not even. Ew. Should I tell you guys what book it was that I finished yesterday? Or am I going to talk about it? I don't know. I'll say what it was. It was Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. Uh, do I want to fix it? Do I want to fix it? Yeah, we'll fix it. I loved it. The first book, King of Scars, was not my favorite, you know? I just felt like nothing really happened in it. But I also feel like a lot of other people's opinions influence my own opinion. So, yeah, maybe it's due for another read. I don't know. I just remember it took me so long to finish it. And then I just, like, I gave it a three stars, which is, like, not terrible, not a terrible rating. I think I had just, like, set my expectations up way too high. And being someone who has not read the Grisha trilogy, only the Six of Crows trilogy, I think I was just, like, expecting, like, a lot of boom, pow, sh bang you know but that's not what this book series is it kind of is you know but not really it deals a lot with grief as a lot of books do and war you know stories about wars they make me so sad and i don't know why i gravitate towards them or why i like read a lot about them a lot of fantasy books have stories about wars and war stories are always so sad King of Scars was okay for me. What other book had I read at the time where it was like old, it was like a spinoff and like old characters kept fucking coming back and I was like, are you serious? Not beloved old characters, but more, oh my fucking God, but like evil characters. And so I think I read, I read one book during that time where that happened and i was just like really we're gonna do this here if you're at king of scars you know who i'm talking about oh fuck let me shut up and fix my eyebrows because no no okay uh what do i do next next i'm gonna do eyeshadow pick a book with your favorite colors on it i'm gonna have to say queen of air and darkness i just love how the red cron contrasts with the blue i think it's so pretty and i remember someone saying that like you see a lot in like music videos or films that they contrast um blue and red together and i just think it's so cool and it's so beautiful i do like the starless sea i think the starless sea looks really really cool and then i also do i think i really really like i think to sleep in a sea of stars i haven't read that one but it's really, really pretty. I have a physical copy of it. I'm using a Morphe palette. I don't know how long I've had this. It's the 25B. And it looks like this. Did I finish my thoughts about Rule of Wolves? I loved it. I loved it. It was a really, really great conclusion. Considering that it's a duology, you would think that there wouldn't be enough packed in there. And because of the event that occurred in King of Scars, it's just like so much stuff happened. And so you're kind of wondering, all right, how are we gonna end this fucking war in the next book? And it's only like 500 pages. I mean, that really wasn't on my mind. I just like, I just picked it up because I wanted to. And also I love Zoya and Nikolai. Favorite perspectives ever. Even from reading Six of Crows, I love the two of them. Like their perspectives are my favorite. I love them so much. They are amazing. I think they both have this like really sarcastic attitude and they play off each other very very well and i love it so much so much but rule of wolves oh my god that shit was so sad again stories about wars i don't know how i read so many of them but they're so sad also talking about the grisha verse i loved shadow and bone shadow and bone is amazing i loved it even though it's not set in stone with a season two, I'm excited for season two. I think there will be. I really hope they do get a second season because you can't leave off on a cliffhanger like that. And as someone who hasn't read the Grisha trilogy, I want to know what happens, you know, even though I've already read on the wiki fan pages about what happens. I would like to know. 
like what happens next. And if you haven't seen Shadow and Bone, I would highly recommend it. You don't even have to read the books. I mean, I would highly recommend the books just because they are really, really amazing. And I feel like if you know the story beforehand, then you won't be too confused about like the different characters coming in because there's a lot of characters that are introduced. And I feel like if you have read the books before, you'll have a better grasp at it than just jumping into it. Because I feel like that was with me and The Witcher. I've never read the books. I don't play the video games. And I just like went into it knowing nothing. That shit confused me. It was so confusing. I was like, I don't know what's happening. I'm just here for Yennefer and Geralt. That is it. But then like after doing like a lot of google searches about like what the fuck is happening i understood you know and i just i feel like if i had taken in content beforehand before watching the witcher it would have been easier to follow but nonetheless i am excited for season two for it i think there's gonna be season two i don't remember okay the next one is eyeliner and pick a dark and mysterious book one. I'm also using the Rare Beauty eyeliner. I'm just gonna pick the yeah, the one that I last read, and I think it was Horrid by Katrina Leno. I I should first say that like I'm not the biggest fan of horror, mostly because like I am a fucking scaredy cat, and I can't read them without like getting the heebie-jeebies at night. I have not heard that one in a while. Heebie-jeebies. Wow. Wow. So I just don't naturally gravitate towards them, but this one was a YA horror, so I was like, might as well, you know? I really liked it. Um, so that's the dark and mysterious book. I also started watching Cruel Summer on Hulu. Honestly, I was a little skeptical on it because I think that's how you are when you're watching a lot of new shows. The first episode was okay. The second episode though, it was really good. I really liked it and I like the three different story or timelines and I like how they're intertwined. Let's do concealer next. Okay, so the question for concealer is pick some characters you wish didn't exist. Now the thing with me is like sure I can hate characters but they are very integral to the story and so I feel like getting rid of them or like having them not exist would just defeat the whole purpose of the entire story. Oh yeah, I used the Rare Beauty concealer as well. I was gonna say from Rule of Wolves, Yuri and Alexander. Fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> Literally. Oh, and Queen Mackie? Yeah, fuck her too. Fuck all of the villains. Yarl Broom? Yarl Broom? Yeah, that's how you say his name. Fuck that dude. I hate him so much. Oh yeah, he's the one I want fucking gone. I wish he didn't exist. Yeah, that's that. That's the character that I'm gonna say for this question. He sucks so hard. Now I'm gonna go into foundation. I have been using the foundation, but I use the e.l.f. Flawless Satin one. Foundation, favorite first book in a series. I'm gonna give two because I feel like they're both different genres and they would... I don't know. Yeah, I just have two. So the first one is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I fucking love that book. I love that book series with all my heart. One of my favorite book series of all time, seriously. It is so great, so fantastic. You know those books that just make you think about them all the time when you're not reading them? This book was that book. It was really, really good. Super memorable. I love all the characters. It's so good. I love it so much. It is fantastic. I love it. If you don't know what that book series is about, it follows our two main characters, Elia and Elias. They live in the empire. There's two groups of people, the marshals and the scholars. The marshals are the oppressors. The scholars are the oppressed. And Elias is a marshal. Elia is a scholar. So there's already kind of that like tension there but when Laya's brother gets arrested for treason she goes on this mission to try to get him back she ends up being the spy for the commandant of the city's academy uh military academy which is Blackcliff academy and there 
Elias attends that school and he is the top soldier there. And their paths cross and a lot of shit happens. This is also a story that centers on war. So it's very, very heavy, a lot of casualties in there. I love this book series so much. It is very integral to like my whole fucking like personality. <laughs> I hold a lot of love for it in my heart. And then the other one that I want to talk about is from a romance one. So this one is not like one continuous story. It's more of just like following different characters, but you know, they're all part of a series. So it counts. And I'm gonna have to say Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. It is such a great first book. And it's like, it does such a good job with making you interested in the characters. It's like, it was one of the first, I think it was the like first adult romance books that I read. And it was amazing. Uh, and it does really get you hooked uh, into the genre. Well, at least for me. Um, it got me hooked into the genre. And I just think, like, it's such a great first book, like, to the series. Because I do love the Brown Sister series. All of them are so good. They are really, really good. And I love them. And I love just how, how well the characters are written. And how, like, three-dimensional they are how healthy the relationships are and like the growth of them i really love it also like i think it's like a great introductory book i guess to romance adult romance more specifically and so yeah if you're looking for a book to get you into adult romance read that one it is great and amazing i love them so so much the next one is powder pick your favorite last book in a series. So I either use the Halo Glow setting powder, but I think today I'm gonna use this one. Favorite last book in a series. They're either a hit or miss for me, and often I have like, I don't know, mixed thoughts on them. I would say a Rule of Wolves. It's a really, really good conclusion to the duology, um, but I kind of already talked about it. So let's let's do a book that I haven't talked about i'm gonna have to say i'm gonna go with the conjuring of light by v schwab that book tore me apart i haven't read it in a while so i kind of forgot what happened but i just remember it made me cry so so much and it was just so goddamn heartbreaking and i like i was i got such a book hangover from that one it was really good i think that series is due for another read it was a really good one. Okay, and then next I do bronzer. There's not a question from bronzer on here. And I know there are other questions, but I'm gonna make up my own. Pick a book that shaped you as a person. Deposing Nathan by Zach Smedley. It was such a great book. I forgot to tell you guys what I'm using. Um, I'm just using the matte bronzer by NYX. I love that book so much. It deals with the topic of sexuality and also religion. I'm not a religious person, but I do struggle with like my sexuality and all that stuff, you know? I think as we all do, I think. So yeah, I think at the time when I read this book, it was a really like perfect time. And I really resonated with a lot of um, the characters. And I do like the themes and messages that it has. And I picked this book up just because, you know, I was like interested in like the premise of it because it follows our main character, Nathan. And right at the beginning, he's giving um, a deposition because his friend Cameron has stabbed him. And it recounts on their whole friendship and them becoming more than friends and then like the aftermath and falling out of everything. There are trigger warnings for this book. Again, I will put them in the description box down below if you're interested. I don't know what else to say about it. It's it's really good. It was one of my favorite books from last year. That's what, yeah. Oh, one that I don't often talk about. This Savage Song or the um, Monsters of Verity series by V.E. Schwab or Victoria Schwab. No one ever fucking talks about that book series and I love it. Like, I don't know why people don't, or like it's not more popular within the YA genre. I think it's such a great story. It follows our two main characters, Kate and August, 
and they live kind of in this dystopian world where violence like murders breed monsters and that's such like an interesting concept it was one of the first audiobooks that i listened to and i did not like have a physical copy in front of me i only listened to it and it was my first audiobook and it was a really really good audiobook so i would highly recommend the audiobook if you haven't consumed the story yet it was really really good and i think it really does um it has kind of shaped me as a reader because this was the first book book series that showcased a non-romantic relationship between august and kate it focuses on friendship and i love that like it was one of the first stories that I read like that. Also the last book in this duology tore my heart apart, what the fuck? Also, there's a non-binary character in this series. And so if you're looking for more non-binary characters, yeah, I think you should definitely check this one out. They're more of a side character and they're more prevalent in the second book, but you know, if you're interested, definitely I would recommend you check it out. Okay, so blush is... Pick a book with a cringe-worthy romance. I'm using the e.l.f. blush palette. Yeah, Scythe by Neil Schusterman, Citra, and Rowan. Felt no connection there. I don't know. I feel like, yeah, they would be very compatible, like, even as friends. But, like, if you want us to believe in the romance, you should have, like, built it up more. Because I feel their potential there, but like once we got to the kiss scene, I was like, how did we go from there to there? Those are the only characters where I can really think about like a cringeworthy romance. I feel like a lot of Shadowhunter couples could fall into this. I feel like like you've grown to kind of love them. I don't know, but um, it's also been a while since I've read those books. So, maybe I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay, next I'm gonna do highlighter, and it's another e.l.f. product. This one here. It's in the color Starlight Glow. Yes or no? Pick a book that brightens your day. I'm gonna have to go with The Kiss Quotient or The Bride Test. The Kiss Quotient. I love it. It's so great. That's it. It's really great. But to talk about the bride test, it's more interesting for me now that I'm talking about it, you know? Because when I first read it, I gave it like a two stars just because I felt like it was so messy. The pacing was off and I just like, it was a lot. And I still think I would have the same um, opinions about that. Like the pacing is off for me and it's very messy at the end but recently i've been like thinking about it again and rereading some of it it's actually really cute it's actually really 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 cute at first i i wasn't like super into the romance you know i was more into the characters individually because i do think that they were very very strong individual characters but like when it came to the romance i was like i don't feel anything but after rereading some of it Oh my god, I do feel the connection. It's so cute! Okay, and then next we're gonna do lashes. I do put on false lashes. I'm gonna use Ardell and Demi Wispies. I don't even know what. I just don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything. So I guess we'll talk about mascara and all that stuff. Pick a long book. I think the longest one that I've read was... Queen of Air and Darkness, that was almost a thousand pages. I can't believe I did that, you know? Like, it took me, I think like a whole week to finish Rule of Wolves. It was just very hefty. Also, I don't do well with fantasy books. I realize that. It takes me like a fucking long time just to like read them. Yeah, I don't know how. I think I had more stamina when I was 16, 17 reading them. Contemporary's just always been my jam. And so when I went into fantasy, it was like new territory for me. That was 2017 when I jumped into fantasy. Um, well, 2016, because that was when I first read An Ember in the Ashes. Contemporary has just always been my jam. And so me jumping into fantasy was kind of like, whoa, this is new. And I think like I heavily indulged in all of it. And 
I was like, fuck yeah, I could finish this shit so fast. I don't think I've ever finished a fantasy book in one sitting. Um, so that's, that says a lot about me as a fantasy reader. But I, those are the ones that like do resonate with me the most. I think just because of how like high stakes everything is and how like, like out of this world it is. And I do really like that, but it's just taking me so fucking long to read them. It annoys me sometimes. Also, like, a lot of fantasy books are written in multiple perspectives. You know that thing where, like, sometimes you just won't like someone's perspective and you're like, fuck. Ugh. And you're, like, dragging yourself through it and it just ruins the whole mood. I hate it when that happens. But, I don't know. Because the next book that I had initially wanted to read, I think it's a romance book. I think it is, but it's The Two Lives of Lydia Bird. I had started that one, I think earlier this year, but it made me really, really sad. And I was like, you know what? This is not great for me right now. So I DNF'd it, like, I think on chapter eight, because it was really fucking sad. So I don't know if I want to pick that up. Lydia Bird is a shorter one but I don't know, it's very heavy, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish it in one sitting. Are we really going to do this today? Yeah, mate. Oh, whatever. And then for the mascara, I'm using the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Waterproof one. I'm gonna put more chapstick on. What is this, EOS? Didn't EOS have like some bad thing about it? But I also do sometimes use the Sunbum Groove Cherry one, this one. I really like this one. What is the question? Your favorite book kiss? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm gonna put this powder puff one first. What color is it? Group love from NYX. Favorite book kiss? I had to think about that one. Should I just lift, list off like some of my favorite? I like the one in Girl Gone Viral by Alicia Rye. <laughs> that one's really funny. It's like the situation for it's really funny. I love that book. It's so funny. And they're so cute. They're so cute. And like the whole like first kiss scene, it's hilarious how it happens. And it's one of my favorites, definitely. I do like the bright test one. I think that one was cute. And then after I'm gonna put this NYX soft cream in the color Stockholm on. I like Nikolai and Soya's in Rule of Wolves. I loved it so much. And the cabin scene, holy shit, dude. My heart was palpitating. I just love them as a couple and individually. They're amazing. Their first kiss, magical. I love it. Oh, you know which one I really, really like? And I revisit like from time to time. Harper and Helene in A Reaper at the Gates. I fucking love them. They are a very controversial couple, I will say. You can have your opinions about them. I personally love them. And I love their first kiss scene. Although it's like, it ends in a very sad way. Oh my God, am I overlining it? Don't do that. A lot of people have like their thoughts on like on the third book and a lot of them don't like it. And I'm just like, really? Because it is my favorite. It's my favorite out of the four. I don't know why. It's just like, oh my God. I love the third book so much. And I think also, I, I talked about this in my um, Ember review, but I think it's just because you got rid of that stupid fucking love triangle. And that shit was fucking annoying. I hate love triangles. And I think that's when it like really started getting very heavy and very dark. But the whole series is very heavy and very dark. It's when the characters are finally like in their positions, like having a handle on it. And so like the stakes are much higher. Everything is getting way, way more complex. And so I'm just gonna pat it off. And that's, that's the makeup look. So that was the uh, makeup and books book tag. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I did ramble on about a lot of different things, but yeah, thank you so much for watching the whole way. And I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.